Hello and welcome to our session, Building Amazing Searches with Search API. My name is Thomas Seidel. I'm the developer and maintainer of Search API and um, several other related modules. Yeah, my name is Markus Kalkbrenner. I'm the maintainer of the uh, Solar Search backend and the Solar Multilingual Search backend for Search API. Um, so this will be a um, site building session. Uh, most of it will be a live demo of how to so set up uh, the Search API in Drupal 8 and a few other modules. A quick outline of uh, the next hour. So I'll first give a few basics about the Search API module, how it works, and then we'll dive right into the live demo with uh, creating a basic search configuration, then creating a search view, um, adding a few uh, add-on modules, optional ones uh, for additional functionality like autocomplete and facets. And then I'll hand over to Marcus to talk about the uh, um, solar and multilingual solar uh, backends and demonstrate their use too. And at the end, we'll have some time for Q&A too. Um, so the Search API module, what is it? Why do we need it? Um, back in the olden days of uh, Drupal 6 and before, uh, there was just a core search module and lots and lots of different modules for adding additional functionality to that, for adding, uh, for searching other types, using other backends like Apache Solar and other proper search engines. And these modules, uh, these modules um, generally uh, didn't work uh, well together. Uh, so you had to have um, different modules if you wanted to use uh, to search uh, user profiles, whether you wanted to search it normally or with Apache Solar, etc. Uh, so then for Drupal 7, the plan was to introduce a new search framework into core to provide the basic um, implementation of search functionality um, that other modules can then use and uh, work together on. And Later, that was, that was then converted into a Search API contract module, since uh, yeah, implementing that in core would have been uh, too much at once. So yeah, that's the basic idea of the Search API. It's a common uh, basis for uh, other search modules. You can use it to search any kind of data. You can use it to search with any kind of backend, and then combine these to um, yeah to have. Uh, common functionality, and you can use any kind of technology to create this for five months to have a stable Drupal 8 version as well. Uh, so yeah, you can use it uh, for both these versions. So a quick summary of the uh, basic building blocks of the um, module. There are two uh, basic types of configuration for the module. First is a search index, which is the central piece of configuration and uh, tells the module what uh, you want to search. Is it, uh, for example, user profiles? Is it notes? Is it comments? And uh, some more details about um, what you want to search. But all of this is um, backend independent. And then this, in an index uses the, ser the search server which is the second type of configuration for um, telling it how the uh, searching and indexing procedures actually work. So um, this is the backend dependent part, which uses then the database or Apache Solar or Elasticsearch or any kind of search engine, storage backend, whatever, to actually do the indexing and searching. And these uh, server backends are uh, um, provided via separate modules. So um, you'll need one of those for them. Um, and other modules, the idea is then that those will always just use the search index. And so those uh, add-on add modules, this additional functionality will all also be backend independent. So views, facets, autocomplete, as we later see, um, all just use the index for configuration. And switching the server later won't affect uh, those, th therefore. And yeah, now a quick uh, overview about the uh, um, parts of the index configuration. This uh, consists mainly of three parts, the data sources, which um, just tell the index what types of data should be, in should be indexed. So like nodes, comments, users, user profiles, taxonomy terms, products maybe, um, things like that. Then fields are the properties on, the, on those um, data items that should be searchable. 
So you could, can just add things like the node title, the username, um, taxonomy term description, things like that, um, product price as fields, and then later use those for um, full text searching or for sorting, for filtering, uh, for those things. And finally, processes or plugins that allow you to um, modify the search in uh, many different ways. So it's, we'll just see a, a few examples of what they can do uh, later on. So with that out of the way, uh, we'll dive right into the, into the um, live demo. So as usual, of course, we first have to enable the modules we're gonna, going to use. For now, this is just the uh, um, search API itself, of course, and the database search, which provides the database backend. As said, um, we'll need a separate module for that, but the database search backend is already, so the database search module is already included in the search API project, so it's not a separate download. Um, then we go to the config pages for our search API. And first we add a server. As said, let's um, add a database server, and so database server is a good name for that. Backend database, um, a minimum word length three is a good default for that, but yeah, uh, yeah select it as you, as you see fit. And with that, we already have the server. Now we need the search index. We'll call that default index since it will um, consist of several types of data. So, hmm? oh, uh, sorry, is this uh, large enough to read in the back rows? Do you want it larger? It, it's good like this? Okay, great, thanks. Um, good to hear. Um, then. Yeah, uh, we'll use the content data source, which of course uh, you usually want, but in our case we'll also index taxonomy terms and users, just to um, showcase that too. Now we'd have some additional configuration for those data sources available, but it's usually not necessary. We want to use the database server, of course, and save that. Um, second step is adding the fields we want to index. So uh, we go to this uh, add fields form. Uh, first we add an aggregators field, which allows us to collect several fields into one. Um, and we use this to have a common label field for all three types of content. So um, we'll add the content title, the taxonomy term name, and the username into that. Furthermore, um, then you yeah, will just add some more uh, fields, like the content author, which could be useful for filtering, but we'll also add the author's name to the full text data, so when the, um, a user types the author name in, they'll also get content by that author. Of course, you also want to uh, index the body, the main field of, uh, of content. Shara is a taxonomy term reference in our case, and uh, the publishing status is also useful for filtering. Uh, for taxonomy terms, we want a description for full text searching, and for users, uh, we also want the user status. The, the content title, the taxonomy term name, and username are already included in the label in the aggregated fields, so we don't, uh, we don't need to add those anymore. Now we just um, provide a better label and machine name for the aggregated field, just to be able to um, spot them more easily. Um, for type, we want a full text, which means that you can find individual words within this field, which is, uh, of course, what we want for the label. And the boost tells us that this field is um, more important than normal um, data on the, co on the entity. Um, so this means that matches in this field will be more relevant than anywhere than at other places. And for the author name, we'll also use full text, but a lower boost, because it's just auxiliary data. Uh, data. And the rest is fine. As you see, we have different um, data types here, but usually the default is fine, like integer and boolean. And we save those changes, and now we just need to pick some processors 
those are optional, but uh, a good, uh, good idea to look over them. Content access app, uh, automatically takes case of access checking for the content data source, um, which is very handy to have, of course. Uh, we want to show excerpts with the search results, so we use the highlight processor. The HTML filter takes care that no uh, HTML tags are indexed, which also makes sense because you don't want uh, users to um, get matches for HTML tags. Ignore case, uh, tokenize, and transliteration are also very good ideas for the um, database backend. And in the case of uh, transliteration, this is only necessary because we have multilingual content on this side. We also have German content, and to properly treat the umlauts, it's a good idea to have the, um, that processor there. And we want to index the hierarchy, since the genre field is a hierarchical uh, taxonomy term field. Um, this is useful to have here. Then we could change the order, but um, that's usually not necessary too. Um, we want to just have the excerpt, so we set this to, this to never. For the HTML filter, we only want those fields um, processed which actually contain HTML, so the content body and taxonomy term description. And for the other fields, um, for the other processors, all fields make sense to, to uh, enable them on. For the tokenize, we should have the same minimum word length as for the database backend. Otherwise, yeah, it's, you will get unexpected results, of course. And yeah, just enable it for those two. And then we just index the content. And that uh, already concludes the um, definition, the configuration of the search index and server. Now we just need some way to actually um, search that data. For this, we're using a view, which I guess almost all of you will be um, familiar with. Uh, so add a view, we call it search. Um, use the index default index and create the page for the search. We also create a menu link, uh, but of course that's the same as for any other kind of view, so just use what you like. Now when we see, uh, look into the preview, we see we already have um, some results listed here, but um, they are not linked, which is of course um, pretty useless, and they're also in both languages at once, which also usually doesn't make sense. So first thing is we just go to the field here. Uh, it's actually lucky, of course, that the label is the one that gets automatically added. This um, depends on views, so yeah, it's a coincidence. Anyway, we enable this uh, link to link this field to its item option, and then we add a filter on the item language. Um, set it to the interface text language, and then you will see that we only get um, English results and properly linked to their um, to their pages. Um, then we also, as said, want the excerpt. So this will mean only when um, there are full text keywords. In that case, you'll get an excerpt with uh, like um, snippets where, it, where the keywords are matched. And of course, we want keywords. So uh, we have to add those as a filter. This is the full text search filter. Just add that, expose it, and you get a normal um, search, search field as you would expect. And if you have a minimum keyword length set, as we did for a database backend and tokenizer, we just configured here to um, make views aware of it too. And then maybe add some sorting for this. Um, like for the filtering, we have all the indexed fields available here. So um, the basic um, default sort is by relevance. So uh, fields, uh, results that are more relevant to the search keywords will be ordered first. But in case where there are no keywords, this would result in an arbitrary sort. So we'll also sort by the label for this as a fallback. So we sort ascending by label, descending by relevance, of course. And then arrange it, uh, rearrange them. Sorry. Rearrange them so the relevance comes first. So in case there are keywords, the rele only the relevance will matter, and otherwise it will be sorted alphabetically. And then we just add a result summary header to see what's going on in the view. 
Um, but that's it. We save the view, go to the page, and here we already see the listing. So this, uh, this is just an unfiltered list of all the English content we have. As you see, um, okay, you can pro probably can't see that, but these are nodes, this is a user, and this would be uh, one of the genre taxonomy terms. And when we now do a search, um, the bodies are all um, just lorem ipsum, so macto will match. You can see where you get results. The um, results are filtered. If I now switch to German, we just get German results. Um, and different ones, of course, since the bodies are different. Um, if we now uh, search for something in the title, like adventure, there's one result and two, uh, uh, three for adventures. So this was not properly handled with the database backend by default. You could use the same for that, but um, Marcus will uh, later demonstrate that it's easily um, solved with Solar 2. Um, but yeah, that's already a working uh, search view. Of course, we could now um, we could now go and add more filters, add um, better sorts or better uh, search, um, better like uh, rendering of the results, but the theming for them. Uh, but instead, I want to talk about some of the available, available add-on modules I said. The first is search be autocomplete. The name is, I think, pretty self-explanatory. What it does is when the user starts typing into the search field, it will suggest keywords that they could try. Uh, it's, at least that's the basic functionality. There's also, um, it's also very extendable so that you could easily um, add your own ways of suggestions or live results. Uh, the default implementation with these suggestions is dependent on the backend. And so it has to be supported by the backend, but that's the case for both database and solar. So you'll be fine um, on that count uh, in most cases. So at least for solar and beta database. So yeah, let's demonstrate that. Again, we go first, of course, and enable that module. Go to the um, search by config again. And now we get an additional tab on the index for autocomplete. Here it lists all the um, searches it knows about. So in our case, just the one search view we, we created. We enable autocomplete for that and save. And that's already it. We now have additional um, options available, but the defaults are fine, at least for our case. And we should set permissions so um, non-admins can also use the functionality. But we'll skip that too uh, for these demonstrations. And now when we go back to the search uh, page, we'll see we have um, now this autocomplete tag there. And when we input some uh, characters, we'll see we get two um, suggested keywords, leaks and learning in this case. And if we go to um, the German search again, then we'll get um, German uh, suggestions Myron in this case. Uh, so yeah, that's already search aut API autocomplete in um, action. As I said, this also um, has some more options. It's currently in a beta status, so we'll uh, hope we'll be able to release the stable version in a month or two, but um, at least it's already, as you see, very usable. And yeah. So um, the second module I want to quickly introduce is the um, facets module, uh, which uh, can be used to add faceted search to the site. If you don't know what faceting is, um, you can see it uh, in the example screenshot on the right. So you'll probably know it from sites like Amazon or so. If you search for something, you can then filter by product type, category, maybe color or something like that. So this is a dynamic way of filtering that's uh, much more user-friendly than just having a huge advanced search form. And uh, yeah, there's lots of options available for that too. It's actually not restricted to the search API. It can also be used for um, core search, or you could integrate it with other um, kinds of searches as well. And uh, for the search API, it also relies on the backend for support. 
So, um, but again, Solar and database supported, so uh, those are fine. Uh, anyways, so yeah, back to the demo. Again, we first install the module. In our case, we just need the facets module. Since it's not dependent on the search API, it has its separate um, user interface. We add a facet here, select our facet source, which is again this, um, this the search view we created. Now we again have all the fields we've added to the index available. For this example, we'll use the shower field uh, for the facet. And then here we get a huge bunch of options for facets. Uh, which I won't go into detail here, but um, yeah, you can just look them through and see which are uh, act applicable or sound like a good idea in your case. We definitely don't want to uh, display the entity labels, not the raw item IDs. So we uh, activate that and then also use hierarchy since Shaw as said is a hierarchical um, taxonomy term field. Then we save the facet. Um, and then we just have to add the block too. So the, the defining the facet just gives us the block to place. Um, we place it into the first sidebar. Here, shower and facets. Place block. And now when we go back to the um, search, we'll see the new uh, shower and facet block right here on the left. Now, uh, when we search for something now, uh, you'll see that this changes too, and then we can just drill into the result. So in our case, we want just high fantasy, we want science fiction, and we want biographies. Eclectic taste, but yeah. So yeah, that um, just filters for all those categories. As you see, it's um, working brilliantly already, even though the module is uh, technically still in alpha, but I think they'll also um, looking to make a stable release very soon. Uh, yeah, we could now, of course, add further facets on like the author or the uh, creation date. Um, but I think this, is, this already serves as a good example. And yeah, I'll now just hand over to Marcus to talk about the solar style of things. Yeah, thank you, Thomas, for um, basically setting up the page. Um, so, solar. Um, and um, uh, first some words, why should we use it? Um, the whole demonstration run on the database backend, and this obviously has some limitations, and there are reasons to use a different backend. Uh, the first reason we often hear is it's uh, faster. Um, we, like Thomas already demonstrated, we have some uh, missing features in the database backend regarding uh, the support of the uh, characters of the different languages and um, things like that. Um, and we get a lot of yeah, more features um, we can um, yeah, provide with a, with a different backend. Uh, just to highlight some, we can do uh, phonetic searches for uh, words that uh, sound similar. Um, there's a good integration for location and proximity searches. Um, you could do spell checking and a lot more. And uh, yeah, with uh, the combination of the solar backend and the search API um, integration to Drupal, you have a real search engine with, which uh, give you, uh, gives you a lot of yeah, more options. And uh, we also directly jump into um, a demonstration. Um, so what I will do now is migrate the site to the solar backend in real time. Um, first, enable a module. Um, if you look for solar, we have two backends. Um, this is the uh, basic backend, the solar search integration. Um, but we will directly start with the multilingual solar uh, because this site, uh, as you already have noticed, consists of two languages um, and contains movies uh, and movie titles in German and English. Um, and 
as soon as you have multiple languages or if you have a single language which is not English, use the multilingual backend. Okay. So switch to the configuration um, of search API. So the first thing we need is a different server. Uh, we still have the database server enabled, um, but now we will set up a solar server. Um, due to, to the fact that I enabled additional modules, you'll see more available backends here. I want to have a multilingual backend. Um, in the next step, I need to tell Drupal how to connect to the solar server. Uh, we um, have a separate plugin uh, system for connectors. Um, if you run your own solar server, these both are fine for you. Standard HTTP connection and additional basic auth. Uh, if you run a solar server um, at a service provider, asks them for their connector plugins. I know there are some from Acquia, Platform SH, or Pantheon, for example. Um, here I use the standard one. Uh, in this case, uh, configuration pops up, which is not the case if you got it from a, from a vendor. Um, I just use this as an internal name here. Um, and since the server is not running, and I want to have some features, I will tell the system that I plan to use a solar uh, six installation. Um, I also check these uh, boxes here because we uh, want to immediately leverage some advanced features. Um, and one thing I would quickly talk about is this uh, drop down here. Uh, like the different connectors that could be plugged in, you can already tell. Uh, the system about the domain in which you are searching. Uh, the default is the generic one. Out of the box, we provide a scientific one because ne uh, words need to be treated differently, like in this example. Um, and uh, um, there are a lot more, and I hope that uh, more domains will be pre configured in the future here. Okay. So. Um, I made a mistake, the server's already running, okay. Um, so what you got now is, um, it looks a little bit different than um, uh, the database backend. Um, the system or the module automatically detects that we have English and German content, therefore we have configurations uh, for Zola. Um, the module ships with around 10 pre-configured languages um, that should be also increased in the future. And uh, using this button for, um, yeah, you can um, just for demonstration, um, it's a little, yeah, maybe it's too small, but uh, we won't look into the content right now. Um, you get all the configuration you need for the solar server, for this Drupal instant, for all languages that exist there. You just have to throw it into your, into your solar server. Um, So, um, sorry. We had some issues with the laptop here, so uh, we had to reboot it right before the talk. Um, okay. Um, so, back to the... Um, um, no, to the search API configuration form. What you see now is um, we have a solar server, which is um, not running. What we provide is within the modules, if you want to have a quick start, uh, couldn't connect to, uh, this was the reboot, just a second. Doesn't like to start. Okay, now Docker is up and running. Um, within the modules, we provide uh, configurations for Docker, so you can simply um, start these. Oh, or not. Uh, 
So I'm a little bit lost now. Ah, okay, 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 okay. There's also uh, always happening something strange if you reboot it. <laughs> okay. Um, I had a different solar server in the background. Um, so now I start the pre-configured one from the module. Um, Okay, here we are. I reload the page now. We see that the solar server I configured for this demo is uh, up and running. And what we do now, uh, Thomas configured a search index and a view for it with all the facets, autocomplete, all the stuff. We simply migrate it. We edit this index and swap it to the solar server. Um, we do some more fine-tuning because um, uh, previously we enabled some processors to improve the search results. Um, we don't use the highlight anymore, we don't use this ignore case anymore, and the tokenizer and the transliteration because Solar itself does it better. And now we index the content. Go back to the site, and now the search is already provided by Solar. Let's do the same as Thomas did before. Also, the autocomplete is working, and what you see now are search results from Solar and snippets from Solar with highlighting. Um, now let's pick up some use cases um, Thomas mentioned before. Let's search for these adventures again. And what you see now our search results um, respecting the native singular and plural handling of this language. So we get the search results for adventure and adventures. Um, let's do something. Obviously, we have no results in the, for the German language, but let's uh, search for something else. Um, since I know there's an, a movie, let's do something strange. We search for a plural of um, Wonderland. And as you see, we get a result here. And uh, the backend probably handles the plural form and also the umlauts within this form. Uh, and we receive uh, the right results here. Um, other or languages different than English have um, different, um, yeah. Um, or require some special treatment. Uh, for example, very common for German are compound words, these very long words where you just uh, attach one noun to another. Um, and for example, um, oh, typo in here. Um, this movie, um, yeah, in German, Charlie and the, Schoc uh, und die Schokoladenfabrik, as you can see, we have a um, oh, sorry. Um, we have a part match here. Uh, it detects that this noun needs to be separated from uh, from the other one, which is also not um, possible uh, with the database backend. Um, Just as I mentioned, we have a lot of features uh, we get if we use the solar backend. Um, I simp uh, or I want to pick one to demonstrate to you the additional features. Uh, I switch back to, um, to English. Okay, just to have the full or basic search result. Or um, one thing I forgot to demonstrate Everything that has been configured before is now is also working. All the facets are delivered by, by Solar now. Um, so let's go back to the configuration, um, to the search API. And um, I'm going to edit the fields of this index. And since I enable Solar, 
I got more possibilities. And one thing I want to demonstrate is the phonetic search. So what this basically does is that it uh, brings up search results that, uh, that sound similar. Because I changed the type of the field, um, the system detects that a re-indexing is required. I'll do this now. Go back to the site and the search. Uh, and now I st uh, type for something like, uh, that's obviously completely wrong. Uh, but this movie, Phoenix, sounds the same. Um, and that's another powerful feature you get um, with Solar. And just to demonstrate the multilingual, multilingual capabilities, well, I do something similar here. For example, we had this movie, uh, Choco. Oh, maybe one more O here. Yeah, and it works also for the different language. Um, and the same, yeah. Um, and I already combined it with this. Um, oh, no, in this case, not. Uh, just again. Uh, yeah, here we have. Um, um, a hit, yeah. Um, so, and like I already pointed out, um, just uh, yeah, check uh, the search API university. You will f uh, not university, universal. Um, you will find more modules. For example, all the location stuff. You got fancy tools where you can uh, yeah, click around and search uh, for for example um, yeah, um, shops nearby or things like that. And yeah, we should um, note that you, pl you please uh, ask to, uh, to read this um, session as all the other sessions you wish visit. So are there any questions? Are you gonna put the demo up on, uh, uh, on your site? Sorry? Are, are you gonna uh, add the, the, a video of the demo or a slide deck? Um, well, yeah, the slide deck will definitely uh, be added to the session, uh, and the video, yeah, they record everything here at the conference, so the video will be up uh, as normal by the conference. Are there any more questions? In Drupal 6, we had something like fuzzy search, which was uh, gone in Drupal 7, but I saw an option search for part of a word, so it's working again? Um, yeah, so the database backend does also support partial matching, and the solar backend, uh, well, you can just um, edit the con solar configuration to enable uh, partial matching for that too, or there's the um, full text engram field type, which also does the same. So partial matching is supported by both these backends. Thank you. Are there any plans to incorporate logging of queries and results into Search API, something which was in the Search API level, uh, I think, in Drupal 7? Um, I just saw a tweet a few days ago um, of some module that I think does that. And otherwise, uh, we'll surely um, add something like that. So a separate module for logging um, queries and results. OK, thank sure. you. Maybe I can mention something before everyone leaves. <laughs> um, I think uh, we will sprinting here on Friday. Um, and. Um, 
since I'm maintaining the multilingual module, um, what we need is uh, help from native speakers because we have configurations for different languages, but uh, um, I can't judge in all cases if the results are correct or and therefore um, we are here and it would be nice if someone shows up and uh, especially uh, who speaks the native language we don't support right now. Um, just to double check some stuff. For example, we have uh, default uh, configurations in the queue uh, for, I, I think, Serbian, Arabic, um, and uh, even Mandarin. <laughs> so, um, and uh, any help at this point is welcome. Okay, I have a question. Um, so, Pantheon and Acquia uh, provide solar search, um, uh, and you know, we use it on Pantheon and Acquia. And for local setup, it always choke. You know, it, it cannot find because it's not set up. Um, you know, what do you guys recommend for it? Should we, you know, try to set it up on local so that it works? Um, or you know, what what is your recommendation? I assume that it's uh, caused by the connectors, um, so you have to switch uh, the connector for the local uh, setup probably. Um, so just connect to you know, it can still connect to their. Uh, so you want to connect the, the live index at, at these providers or your local development index? Just local. Yeah, then you should swap the, um, the connector um, like I, I, I showed. We have, uh, you have to use the standard locally if mm -hmm. you have your local solar because what they add is some authentication stuff and they have their own API and um, and everything in this configuration, if you just pick it from the live side, is pre-configured to connect their server. Yeah. Okay. Um, but maybe um, if you come to me afterwards, um, I can show you directly on the laptop what I mean. Okay then, thanks everyone for attending.